What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Gym Leader Geo, and this is the locker room, season eight, week two of the GBA. The San Francisco Giantes are team building for the San Diego Chim Chargers and their coach, Envy. So, for those of you who don't know, uh, Envy and me are bros, and he's sort of my front office ish like we, we talk uh, we talk games and stuff like that before my matchups but uh, unfortunately he's obviously not gonna help me team build against himself and uh, he couldn't help me team build versus chimp last week so this is the second week in a row uh, that I've kind of gone at it alone and I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who reached out as I kind of mentioned that uh, last week I got a lot of uh, comments I got a lot of messages on discord I really do appreciate everyone saying like I'll help you out with the front office um, I, I'll, I'll I'll respond to everyone who's sent those messages my way. Um, but just to clear up in the videos here, um, I have some team building trust issues a little bit. Um, worrying. Uh, it's the same thing with my Jenners. I'm also very worried that Jenners will release information to my opponents, um, which is probably a little bit uh, unrealistic. I don't think people really do that in the format, but. Um, that's a big reason why I choose to, I've chosen to go at it alone so much throughout my uh, career with the GBA. Um, it's just sort of for that reason. So, um, fortunately, Envy will be able to help me again. We'll be able to. He'll be able to help me team build, and you know, I can get back to a more normal pace of things uh, starting after this week, and I don't really have to worry about it again for a while. So. Um, that's fortunate, um, but I still think I'm coming up with some pretty good ideas uh, without his help. Uh, last week's game was uh, unfortunate. Spoiler alert to anyone who didn't watch it. Uh, I ended up losing to Chimpact uh, in a 2-0 loss and beat myself up over it a little bit because I thought I could have won that match and I put myself in a position to win it. Uh, and looking back, the hindsight 2020 issue is that I realized that I definitely won that game if I had just clicked Bullet Punch with Scizor. If I'd clicked Bullet Punch with Scizor against the Cloyster instead of hoping maybe he would do something like Set of Spikes or, or not click Ice Shard, then um, I would have... Uh, I would have won that game because if I bullet punched, um, then the fact that it was specially defensive Cloister, it still would have gone down to a Shadow Ball. I would have beast boosted at plus one. I would have taken out Uxi and I would have taken out Magnezone. I would have outsped both because I was scarfed. Uh, so I literally would have won the game. And that's really, that sinks in to me because I put myself in a position to win and then I made a mistake. And it's unfortunate. I didn't know it was specially defensive and if I had calced or prepped a little bit better uh, I could have known that but you know it's just it just sucks and uh, I I wish I would have gone into this battle 1-0 uh, instead of own one uh, because it makes my path to the playoffs a little more rocky for those of you who don't know the, that process it's sort of uh, it's conference based and I need to beat at least one of the non-division winners from my uh, rival conference um, division in order to make it to the playoffs. So it, it's doable uh, and it's very early in the season and it wasn't a loss that makes me doubt myself. I know I played well, um, just made a mistake and Chimp's an amazing player and I, you know, wish him the best for the rest of the season. Uh, but let's, uh, I've been talking a lot about last week, let's talk about this week. So my draft for those of you who uh, are still getting used to it. We have Mew, Mega Scizor, Blacephalon, Toxapex, Doug Trio, Chestnut, Haxorus, Ditto, Rotom Fan, Slurpuff, and Archeops. And my two Z captains are Blacephalon and Archeops. Going up against the Chim Chargers, uh, they have Tapu Koko, who is his Z captain. They have Empoleon, Mega Pinsir, Slowbro, Amoongus, Hoopa Unbound, Incineroar, Kyurem, Alolan Raichu, Gligar and Girder. Um, so I've sort of organized his team based on tiers of likelihood that I think he brings them. The top tier being, I'm positive they show up in, in the match against me. Tier two being, I'm fairly certain, or that they provide a big uh, benefit to him if they come. The third tier being, I wouldn't be surprised. And the fourth tier being, I would be surprised. Uh, so that's just sort of my mindset about it. So I know when I'm building, 
what I value um, as being effective against the rest of his team. So for example, if I had a Pokemon that beat the bottom three Pokemon but lost the top three, probably not a good bring for me because I don't see the bottom Pokemon as being likely brings or I see them as being easily counterable or not potentially damaging to me. So that's my mindset going in. Uh, and so let's hop into the team that I am bringing this week. The team is Ho Meowner, the Mew, Dyson, the Rotom Fan, Proto, the Mega Scizor, Remix, the Ditto, Toys R Us, the Haxorus, and Dig Dug, the Dug Trio. So we'll start off with Mew. Mew is running an offensive speedy set this week. Uh, with Stealth Rock, U-Turn, Earthquake, and Zen Headbutt. So it's physically offensive with a little bit of support, a uh, tiny amount of bulk, and EVs set to outspeed the Kyurem. So the speed tiers for EV, as far as my team is concerned, are pretty cut and dry. He doesn't have any base 100s. He has base 105s, um, and I have things that are either significantly higher than that, such as Doug Trio, or don't quite reach that and so the next nearest drop point is 95. I have multiple Pokemon that outspeed the 95 and so I just need to set a lot of my speed so you will see this a lot this week. Uh, a lot of Pokemon whose speed tier is set to beat that so 162 is the speed you need to beat a Jolly or Timid Kyurem. So Dig Dug of course has that. Toys R Us. Oh that's right I'll get to him in a little bit uh, a little bit later but uh, does not have that, and then Home Owner uh, also does have that. And the speed of Dyson is set to when scarfed, outspeed, um, Mega Pinsir, and Tabu Coco, I believe. I believe that was the. I need to math that one a little bit. I, I kind of forgot. But let's let's go over the Pokemon specifically. Mew's running Expert Belt. Expert Belt will provide a damage boost against every single member of his team except two with the coverage that I am bringing. I'm bringing physically offensive because that allows me to take on Amoongus a little bit better. It allows me to maximize the damage of U-Turn so I can net good damage with my momentum grabbing. I am fast so that I can outspeed Speedy of obviously uh, Kyurem, but also Hoopas. This, this sounds weird. But Mew is actually a really good Hoopa check uh, because I'll outspeed him and U-turn from this set uh, will Oko even a high HP investment Hoopa Unbound uh, and I will outspeed him on also. So Home Yowner is, um, I have Stealth Rock on him just because rocks will be a big deal to help pressure the Mega Pinsir. I don't want to allow Mega Pinsir to come in freely or often. Uh, he is a problem to the team but he has specific checks that I need to eliminate first so that the Pokemon that I have that beat Mega Pinsir uh, kind of have free reign against him. Mega Pinsir pairs incredibly well with Tapu Koko, uh, which is why I'm almost positive they're both going to be coming together. And Polion's coming because MB really likes Empoleon. He's sort of a, a do-all when it comes to field support. He'll get rid of any of the hazards that you have, and then he'll layer up his own hazards on his own, uh, and pull in a great Pokemon for that. The moves are relatively standard in what you might expect. U-Turn, of course, uh, that's momentum and good damage against Slowbro. It allows me to net momentum against things that might switch in against me, and it's uh, a great way to kill Hoopa Unbound. Moving on, we have Dyson next. Dyson is a Choice Scarfed Rotom fan. He has the Levitate ability, which is really important for him because if for some reason I lose that flying typing, oh man, that would be really bad. So uh, considering I was considering Air Balloon as an item just to like really make sure uh, that I don't get hit by uh, ground type moves, but I decided to go with Choice Scarf instead <laughs> um, because that allows me to outspeed Mega Pinsir and makes me a great Mega Pinsir check. Uh, I resist Mega Pinsir's primary stab um, once he's Mega Evolved and has Aerialate. It provides me, I'm defensive enough that I can take hits from that relatively well, um, but I can also outspeed and do a lot of damage with Thunderbolt. Volt Switch, of course, for momentum, um, makes for a good team core, uh, Volt Turn core with Home Yowner. I have Air Slash, of course, because it helps me against the uh, Amoongus. 
Uh, and I have Trick because there are several of his walls are pretty annoying and scarfing them basically makes them moot point Pokemon. Slowbro, uh, Moongus, uh, I wouldn't, I don't think it's likely he's going to leave in or switch in the Empoleon against me, but it would be good against that. Also, it would neuter the Gligar, which is a potential switch in if he's predicting a uh, Volt switch. It could also hurt uh, Girder, both of which being Eviolite Pokemon. Uh, and just in general provides me some, some options as far as the getting rid of my item and setting myself up to do some other things. So pretty much standard um again i i'm sorry that i don't have it written down in my notes exactly what speed i was trying to get here with the 146 but i can't open my team builder notes because it's on this screen and uh, i don't want to mess it up but um this should a a afford me the ability to outspeed some key threats on his team including uh tapu koko uh, provided that the tapu koko is not scarfed also the electric typing is just going to be helpful against him and i think rotom fan uh will help me a lot in this game moving on to proto proto is running a mixed specially defensive offensive uh adamant set uh, with bullet punch u-turn defog and roost um con contemplated a swords dance set but decided against it um i don't want proto staying in too long in this game um he has multiple pokemon who can switch and sort of take advantage not like take advantage but uh don't mind so much the bullet punch outspeed could potentially threaten with uh coverage and uh, i think proto's uh game plan here is really kind of come in when it's safe do some field control if necessary with uh defog uh, in the mid to late game um i It'll be a balance because uh, Mew getting up rocks, if I lead with Mew, which is a potential, a really good potential lead option for me since it's not immediately threatened out by anything other than Pokemon that I don't see as likely leads, uh, like say Incineroar. So it allows me to get rocks up early. His potential rockers don't love Mew. <laughs> I mean, you could run Stealth Rock Pinsir, although I feel like that's a little unlikely, but Mew can handle the Empoleon thanks to Earthquake, and if he chooses to defog because he wants the rocks gone, then I sort of come out on top of that war there, the uh, the rock war. But if he does get rocks up early, uh, Proto uh, with a set like this doesn't really mind coming in against the Empoleon and getting the defog off myself. Uh, just have to worry about Skull Burns, but. It shouldn't be too massive of an issue. Bullet Punch helps me against Curum, provides me priority against the uh, several of the other Mon on his team, such as the Hoopa, um, potential Scarfed Mon options, and it's good against good just to have there. I mean, I don't really need to explain it too much. Continues the U-turn core with Dyson and Home Yoner. And uh, Roost just for longevity there. It's it's a pretty standard set. It's not too unusual. The reason I'm opting for special defense investment um, is to help me against the Hoopa U, to help me against the Kyurum, and um, it felt <laughs> felt right to me. I guess I don't, I don't know. Uh, I I don't see the, his physical threats being something that Scissor really wants to stay in against. Girder, of course, has. Uh, coverage for me, Incineroar has coverage for me, Tapu Koko can run either physical or special, so it doesn't, it's kind of a wash in that regard. Uh, so I, and it helps me against some of the walls that are likely switch-ins against Scizor, such as the Slowbro or the Empoleon. Uh, moving on to Ditto, it's a pretty standard thing, his IV setup that I went for is Hidden Power Bug, so that if I copy a Hoopa U, uh, if it's running Hidden Power, that I will be able to super effective against it um, itself. Um, hidden Power Bug also helps against the Slowbro that might be packing Hidden Power Fire for Scizor. And uh, that was sort of the thought process there. Uh, pretty standard set, just a Choice Scarf. And yes, I do recognize that I now have two Choice Scarf Mon. A big reason for that is in prep with Envy in the past, I think it is something that he doesn't 
anticipate. Uh, and so I think I can take advantage of that. The Toys R Us, the Haxorus. Uh, we're running Outrage, Dragon Claw, EQ, and Counter. Now, I have considered running Swords Dance. I have considered running Dragon Dance. You know what? If <laughs> I change this out a lot, I think I will... I've switched this up a lot, which is why the the set is where it is. I think I'm going to change out uh, Outrage for Dragon Dance. Um, I think that's what I'm going to do. Uh, <laughs> although I did already gen my team, so I'd have to ask for another gen. Uh, I, I, well, it'll kind of be a game time decision. I have changed my Haxorus set a lot, guys, a lot. But let me just... Let me just talk about it, and I'll, I'll go through why it's changed so much. Uh, the speed tier is to outspeed uh, um, a modest Kyurum, and after I get a Dragon Dance, I will outspeed Scarf Modest. The reason I'm going Adamant instead of Jolly, which I know outspeeds uh, Kyurum, um, is sort of a mind game thing, and also largely because uh, it helps me take on the... Amoongus. Uh, now, this has been a big back and forth in my head. Amoongus is a good switch in to Haxorus. Slowbro is also a good switch into Haxorus. Uh, Slowbro, of course, runs the risk of burning me with Scald, which is why uh, Lumberry is there. But I'm, of course, not going to set up with Haxorus until that Slowbro is gone. I feel like I might need to kind of have another look at Toys R Us because I've changed so much information about him so many times that now it almost doesn't make sense. For a long time, I was running Jolly uh, just to make sure that I had the speed tier necessary. But I was noticing that my my hits in my practice games against myself, which I know is a stupid thing to do, but it just helps me kind of visualize uh, natural flow of the game. Um, in doing that, I was noticing that uh, after setup, I was struggling against the Amoongus. However, at, uh, as I ran a Swords Dance set one time, um, I noticed that I could set up and then two hit KO uh, the Amoongus. Or Swords Dance Outrage has a chance to Oko it. There's some speed question marks here, but I imagine that. If I handle Kyurem early, Swords Dance really puts me in a position where the only things that outspeed me uh, are things that uh, that I'm not s uh, that are handled in other ways. So Swords Dance was a big um, option that I was toying with for a while. Swords Dance Jolly. I found Swords Dance Adamant can take on some of the walls that are likely switch ins against me. Uh, Dragon Stab and EQ coverage are pretty much all I need. EQ hits super effective anything that resists Dragon on the team and everything else Dragon is just neutral against. Counter is the big question I'm sure everyone is uh, everyone has in, in mind. Uh, counter allows me... Counter Lumberry allows me to... No matter what direction he chooses to go with some of the potential mons he might have for me. Uh, to switch in against Haxorus, such as the Slowbro, Skull Burning, and the Amoongus going for Spore, it gives me an option, a scout option for them, and a kill option for the Amoongus. Uh, the only thing Amoongus can have for Haxorus is status or foul play. I've run Amoongus en enough to know that foul play is the only thing that it can do against a mon like this. It doesn't like, Hidden Power Ice is going to hit me for, like, 20%. It just, it doesn't have anything for me. And so it actually becomes a setup option for me. However, if I set up a Swords Dance against it, it can foul play and kill me. So, Counter is a great way for me to take out the Amoongus myself if I fail to do so with any of my other Mon. Uh, Amoongus can be slippery um, because it can switch in great against things uh, on my team that uh, it doesn't really worry about, like Proto, uh, or um, as a revenge on Dig Dug, or something like that. So, being able to lure it in, thinking it's a good answer for Haxorus, uh, I, it gives me another way to beat it. Um, if I scout it with Remix and see that it doesn't have foul play, I know it can set up on it easily with Swords Dance, Dragon Dance, or just popping off Outrages, uh, and so that's why 
This has gone through so many iterations in my mind, but Calendar was the one thing that really truly uh, developed my mindset around how I'm going to break through that Pokemon and set myself uh, into a position where I can potentially sweep. And my last Mon that I'm opting to bring is Dig Dug, who is another choice Scarfer, and here's the reason for that. Um, the Tapu Koko outspeeds me without a choice scarf, uh, and um, that kind of defeats the purpose <laughs> a little bit of it. Uh, it also allows me to run Adamant, which is important for me to hit some pretty crucial Okos against the uh, Pinsir. One of the things I was trying to calc out in my head well, it was what rock stab to bring for a while I was like oh I'll bring rock tomb it's the most accurate um, but it wouldn't kill uh, unless it was uh, no it wouldn't kill so um, I eventually was like okay I need to run stone edge uh, stone edge is a good safe move against a lot of his team uh, and with a choice scarf uh, I'm ensuring that I'm outspeeding at least the Giram and can Oko that as well with the Stone Edge. So that was the mindset behind Dig Dug. I of course have Memento to Memento into... Um, yeah, that's why I think I need to regen this and make sure that I have set up on my Toys R Us because I need to... It, the point of Memento was Memento into Haxorus and provide Haxorus with the opportunity to set up. Uh, also, when I built this Dig Dug set uh, at one point, Proto had the Swords Dance, so Memento into Swords Dance there. Uh, it has Toxic for Mons that I struggle to break through and to put things on a timer. EQ Stone is just for Edgequake coverage, which is pretty good against his team in general. So that is the full team this week, guys. Uh, let me know in the comment section down below if you like that. If you don't like that, uh, give me some give me some feedback and let me know what you think. Uh, my battle with MV is going to go on in about 30 minutes or so, uh, depending on uh, whether or not MV is done eating yet. So I'll have to check in with him a little bit later. Uh, leave me some love, leave me some feedback in the comment section down below. As always, my name is Jim Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys next time.